Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Five wines in front of me. I actually have nine wines in front of me, and then I sort of split them into ones that were uh, a bit more aromatic and others that were slightly on that heavier side. Did I get them right? Only one way to find out. Let's just set in. So um, they end up being um, mostly um, three, no, two Spaniards, two French, and uh, an, an Australian to finish with. Anyway, let's just dig in. First one is uh, from Catalonia and Costas del Segre in particular. It's the Ozel uh, 2011, and I've done these wines before, uh, and I love the label and uh, intriguing blend: Macabeo Sauvignon Chardonnay Riesling Musca Albarino. So some aromatic grape varieties, and some that are a bit more on that. Uh, uh, more, um, yeah, fuller, broader shouldered, and uh, maybe not as cerebral, or are they? Let's have a see. Clean, nutty, light peach character. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, muscati like grapiness in the background, but um, all in all, it just seems like a, a rounded, quite um, well built, but um, at this stage in its life, it's only 2011, so just. Um, uh, short of its first, bir first birthday by a few months, um, it's also got some freshness. And that citrus-like Sauvignon edge kicks in there, but the main event is this rounder, peachier fruit. So you get the stoniness uh, of the Sauvignon, stony mineral uh, character, but it's more on this peaches and slight creamy nuttiness. Good, uh, not great. Uh, I like it. I would like it chilled on a beach, ideally in, um, in Catalonia, but... Um, I can't be there, but uh, so I'm just going to have to make do with here. Uh, next one I've got is uh, still in Spain, uh, Vina Real 2011 uh, Barrel Fermented Rioja. Now, Viora by itself are the main grape here. I don't, I, I, sometimes they use a bit of Malvasia, but I think this is all 100% Viora. Viora by itself, or Macabeo, as it was in the first one, same grape, um, it's a bit neutral. And um, so you, there are some unoaked white Riochas that are a bit, um, they're all okay, but uh, uh, the adding the oak uh, it gives it a little bit more flesh, a little bit more creaminess. Um, and so here, what you're getting is a, the, the lemony character, uh, very light lemon, very uh, citrusy, uh, clean, sappy edge of the wine itself and then a little bit more creamy smokiness from the oak. The oak's been nicely handled, it's not dominating the wine, it's just um, sort of pushing the fruit to the fore and saying here I am in the creamy background. And then you come to taste it and you think well is that oak just a little bit overdone? Uh, there's that sweet coconutty edge that it gives and maybe I'd like just a little bit less of it. The thing about it is it's 2011 wine so maybe in a few months time the oak influence will have diminished but my concern is then that that perky edge, that perky citrus edge that the fruit's got will also have disappeared with it. It's okay but um, not jumping up and down. Next one, uh, we're in, in France now so this is a Chateau Rouquette sur Mer Cuvée Arpège uh, from La Clap. Uh, which is uh, one of the, it's in, it's in the Languedoc, I suppose it's where uh, Languedoc meets R Roussillon. It's a big rock near Narbonne. So the grapes here, uh, well the main one actually they, they've got in this part of, uh, of the, the Languedoc, or main two, it's sort of where Languedoc meets Roussillon. Grenache Blanc, Blanc and Grenache Gris, but there isn't any of either of those two in here. Uh, it's the one that uh, they add to, the, to those two to give them freshness. Bourboulonc, that I think takes the lion's share, and a bit of Roussan in there to give a uh, little bit of musky perfume. And it's doing that. Um, it feels like one of those quite subtle wines where after maybe the loudness of the first two, it's one of those wines that, that could get lost in a, in a tasting Lineup, but um, uh, I suppose I, I could see it coming. I, the reason I put it there is the uh, it's high, slightly higher alcohol than the previous two. Uh, so those were 13%, next to a 13 and a half. Um, so yes, there's a freshness, there's a bit of stony mineral character coming through. One of those, it's like, like quiet wines, but I think what a quiet, but with a bit of presence. It'll be interesting to see when I taste it. And that's when a more interesting uh, piney, um, minerally side comes out. So you get um, some of the wildness of the of the herbs um, in in um, in the reds it tends to be the things like the thyme and the basil sorry thyme and the rosemary uh, that, that that come through strongly in the white you almost get this. Um, it's like, yeah, pine-like resin, resin character. So I get that. There is this muskiness that's, that the Roussin's giving. Um, musky, it's on that musky peach skin rather than pear skin. Yeah, peach, peach and pear, a bit, a bit of those two. And so there's freshness there, but there's also restraint. Um, and it, whereas it's fuller, it, it's got more alcohol than the ones before, it's a little bit more subtle and it feels fresher. Pretty tasty wine. 
Good. Let's head across France now to the Côte de Rome for Jean-Luc Colombo's uh, Côte de Rome Blanc, Le Vent, The Wind. I don't know, uh, Une Brasse de Fleur de la Clairette. So the grape here is Claret uh, and um, some more Roussel. Not sure of the proportions of each, but uh, hey. Well, there's not much uh, aroma coming off at the moment. There's a little bit of the um, slightly resiny character that was it was in the one before. Uh, but all, uh, overall, it just feels a little bit uh, tight, closed. Um, has it been in oak at all? To no, I don't think it's been. I, I can't. I can't taste any oak. But I was just wondering whether it had been recently bottled because it does feel like a wine that stays and not really coming out to play. Um, better tasting. Actually, it does come out to play when you start to when it when you taste it. Um, so yeah, you've got the, the you've got the, that resiny edge, but then a herby character comes through, and uh, this uh, like I don't know jasmine. There's some some blossom in there. Um, more of those uh, peach pear characters, maybe a verging on the apricot as well. And uh, texture wise, it's one of those wines that um, leaves your mouth feeling as if it's had something that was quite full bodied, but then uh, it's got the freshness to leave your mouth feeling excited and wanting more. I, I, th I think both of those wines are wines that will grow on me. I'm not sure. First two, I, the Spanish ones, I always feel like they're, 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 they're showing that they're, they're, they're peak now. The other two, I feel that uh, they'll be better in, given, given another couple of hours open. If there's any different, I will report back to you. But not before trying the final wine. So that we've done our Europe bit. We are now back, well, uh, now over in Australia. Uh, McHenry Honan, Three Amigos uh, and, uh, from Margaret River. And it's 2009. And uh, the, uh, so this is Marsan, Chardonnay and Roussel. So two and a half years older than all the others. Let's see whether it's two and a half years older and wiser. Lychees, green gauge, um, there's some citrus in there, um, and then there's oh, something rhubarby as well. It's, uh, it smells intriguing, and it's got a little bit of that uh, nutty uh, character from aging on lees and also from the extra extra time in bottle. Um, it's, it still smells like it's going to be fresh, but um, it has got a bit of wisdom to it. Honey, honeysuckle, uh, and there's this toasty character. Uh, I think part of the toastiness, it's funny, it reminds me of um, some uh, Hunter Valley Semions get this, this similar toasty character. Verdello in parts of Australia gets it as well. Here, I think the toastiness is a bit of the lees ageing, but also it's, it's, it's partially or totally barrel fermented. I don't know. Can't see. There's a bit of barrel fermentation. Uh, can't tell from the back label. Um, but what it is, it's, um, it, it's, it's as fresh as any of the ones before, but it seems to have more fruit. And I think that's, that's the great varieties that they're, they're using here. Uh, that little bit of Chardonnay just adding a little bit more, uh, both richness and also fruit flavour. Um, in terms of favourites, well, that's the one that, uh, that I'd say stands out on first tasting. But I wouldn't be surprised, as I said before, if the uh, two previous ones, uh, particularly the La Clap, um, suddenly, uh, oh, well, not suddenly, but over the course of the next few hours, came out of their shell and revealed more of their personalities. It'll be interesting to see whether that holds its own or whether it starts to tail off. At the moment, it's looking pretty good. Just like me, really. See you soon.